Hey everybody, it's me. I just wanted to hop on really quickly to introduce today's video. This week I interviewed Brittany Lamerts and she is the owner of Atlas Bell Studio. Over the years, she's done a lot of different things from restaurant management to now making doormats, which is super exciting. I wanted to find out more about how she got from where she was to where she is now and how she adapted through um, the challenges of this year. So get ready to learn a little bit more about Brittany and her business. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Amy. I am here with Brittany Lambert and she is the owner of Atlas Bell Studio. She does all kinds of crazy things, but primarily doormats and doormat kits, but I'm gonna let her kind of tell you a little bit more about what it is that she does. Hey guys, um, so I make everything. Uh, <laughs> that's what everybody, you know, like people will post on Facebook and then tag me like, oh, Brittany can make this, Brittany can make that. And then so my friends will be like, is there anything that you're not good at? I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not really good at sports because I'm not competitive. Um, like I want everybody to have a good time. Yeah. Um, I've always been one of those, like, I'll get interested in something and like, oh, I want to figure out how to do that. Okay, cool. Well, now I know how to do that. So I'm going to move on to something else. Sure. Um, my, I started an Etsy shop in 2012 and I actually started with crochet items. Gotcha. Um, I taught myself how to crochet. My son was six months old and we couldn't afford a $20 beanie, but I could afford a $3 thing of yarn. Sure. And I learned how to do it. And that's how it started. Um, now my bread and butter is doormats. Um, I do custom doormats. I, tr my focus when I started selling them was I want to make doormats that your neighbors are not going to have yeah. that you can't buy at target. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, a doormat's kind of like a decal for your house. <laughs> decal for your house. It, I like that. It is like, yeah. think about it. You go up to somebody's porch, you know, and it's, if it's like pretty and elegant, you're like, okay, everything in here is going to be like Instagram cute. But sure. if it's like got personality, you're like, my man, right? You know? It's just different. That's the tone. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and like, I like the stuff in my shop, like it's, I attract certain clientele and I also sure. repel certain clientele. Like it's not for everybody and I'm fine with that. That's okay. Um, it's just the way it is. But it's like my, the very first one I made, it says, uh, just so you know, there's like a lot of cats and dogs in here. <laughs> Cause it was the person that I made it for. I was like, you should warn people before they come over, like how many animals you have. Because there's a lot of people. <laughs> right. Like, so she would come in the room and like, you know, when you go into a house, you don't know that they have a cat. Yeah. It's cats are cats, right? Yeah. Versus like the dogs come Sneaky. say hi. Sneaky. So she'd come into the room and it was like a cartoon character, like pulling cats out from behind her back. Like slowly all these cats would appear. And I was like, this isn't, how many do you have? Because when I walked in, I didn't smell any animals at all. Yeah. And now I'm like, it's a zoo. It's crazy. And so I made it for her, you know, kind of like, like a gag gift. Right. But I was like, oh, those are great. You should sell doormats. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. Do you know how many people sell doormats? Nobody's going to buy doormats for me. I've already done this once with crochet stuff. Like whenever I started that, yeah. my friend convinced me to do it. And I was like, that market's real saturated. I don't yeah. think it's a good idea. And, but it turned out. And so I was like, okay, well, if I just focus on making like funny ones that you can't yeah. get maybe it'll work and so on now i'm like 33 killing it with doormats that's funny so how long have you been doing the doormat thing uh the first one i made was in 2017 so i started like pretty quickly after i made that first one i was like okay well let me like come up with some other like funny phrases and designs that's and it funny. totally took off and then i just i changed everything in my etsy shop and then last fall was when i started doing the events so like gotcha. i started doing the doormat painting parties in houses sure. and then i also started going to events to be a vendor like to sell gotcha so um so when you have like events do you have a minimum number of people that typically go to those are they big are they small like what's that look like both so <laughs> that's a that's a really common question um a lot of people when they message me they're like hey what's your minimum um i've done a party for 3 people um and then i've done a party for 20 people Wow. That's a lot. So it's like, as long as I have enough notice, there's not really a cap on it. Um, as long as you have the, the big, materials, you can get the materials. Right. Like I've got the stuff. The big thing, like for private events is I let people pick custom designs. So like uh -huh. I have to go and create the design for them and cut the sure. stencil. So because people are people, I'll inevitably have like one or two guests, like two hours before the party be like, Hey, is it too late? And I'm like, yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> but I can bring any of these, which are like the simples that I already have created. Yeah, so that's yeah. the thing. It's just like, as long as I have enough time to design and cut everybody's gotcha. custom one. Um, this year I started doing, uh, because of the pandemic, yeah. actually, um, I started doing events at uh, like businesses, like to help sure. out. 
Um, so like I go to Ronin, I'll go to Wildflyer in Navasota mm -hmm. and we'll, I'll create the event. People buy my ticket, but they come and they're like buying food and drinks at the restaurant. And then gotcha. it, like a lot of people that have come to the Ronin one, like they came there for me and they've never been to Ronin before. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, it's amazing. Like the owners are super cool. The food's yeah. great. The drinks are awesome. And you know, it becomes like one of their favorite spots. And so it yeah. was kind of like win-win for both businesses. Yeah. So it was like, I know that I can draw a crowd now that I've been doing this for a year. Sure, yeah. Like even with the pandemic, like you know, people wear their masks. They don't have to share supplies. There's hand sanitizer, sure. or whatever. Like you either feel safe to come or you don't. Yeah. Um, but they came, and so I was like, okay, like what can I do to help drum up more business? Sure. For other local businesses, especially the restaurant industry that were struggling, which has a soft yeah. spot in my heart because that's where I I came from. I used to be a yeah. restaurant manager. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, the restaurants are. It's that's been a tough. That's been a tough thing because they there's so many people involved in running the restaurant that they you know I, I always I just feel bad I feel like they can't catch up and so I think that's awesome that you're able to um do that so do you have you have decent stupid question to ask you have decent turnouts when you do those events yes um so like some it varies like at Ronan I usually do like a Thursday evening and then a Sunday brunch um we rolled the Sunday one back it was starting at noon and we didn't have very many people come. And I was like, I think noon is a little bit too early because like, mm -hmm. it's not quite enough time, like to get out of church yep. and they get here. And so we bumped it to one and then the turnout came a lot better. That's but the Thursday, cool. Thursday evening crowds are good. Um, I've done them at Lissa's uh, restyled sip and shop in Caldwell on yeah. the weekends and weekday evenings. And oh, those cool. turnouts are really, really good. That was one of my first 20 people parties. Sure. Like the very first one I had there, I walked in and I was like, oh, like every one of her tables was full and they were all fantastic. That's was, awesome. So, so, so what, you, you know, you make the mats, but what other things can you do? Like what, what's kind of, if you were to say you had a secondary product, what would that be? Hang on. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show off. It's show us something. So I do, I do shirts. Like I did this shirt, but I've done, and I don't really advertise this. I guess Amelia got onto me. I should do this more. For a lot of the the businesses in the We Group, I've made logo shirts for them. So wow. this is I don't know if you guys know the BCS oh, that's Cat cool. Company. That's cool. It's uh, Jessica Christian. Yeah, I'm probably messing up her name. It's she's got three names on Facebook. Um, I think a lot of us do. <laughs> but yeah, well, I, I know right, like your maiden name. Um, but I like I did these for her. I did. Um, now I'm blanking. I've done a whole bunch of them, sure. but I, I, I took shirts off of my Etsy because it was confusing. <sighs> like I just randomly get an order and go, Ugh. you know, like yeah. I don't really make it versus like, yeah. if it's in person, it's easier. And for these, like normally, you know, for a business there, they want like at least four sure. and so it's, it's fine. But Amelia was like, you know, like when people tag you on stuff and you say like, you can make it, they're like, Oh, I had no idea. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I I'll post like pictures of other things that I make, but sure. you can't go to my Etsy and order any of that. Stuff. Well, and I, I think, do. I think from a branding standpoint too, you have to be careful how, how wide your array is or people lose I sight. I of her, like, I, I tell people, I'm like, I don't have like, cause I used to have some other stuff on my Etsy too. And I took it off. Cause I don't want to be like the cheesecake factory menu. Yeah. Like, I don't want it to be like, like, Oh, she has shiny object syndrome. Like, like, you know, you yeah. come in and you're like, is this, what do you focus on? Yep. What's your specialty? What are you are really we eating pizza? Or are we eating like, food? I'm confused. Job, like, yeah, like I don't, you know, but like, I, I don't have a problem, especially like for, for local orders being like, yeah, I can make this for you. Like I've done decals, I've done, um, business decals, you know, like, um, like logos sure. and stuff, That's um, cool. on cars, on glass doors, things like that. Do mugs. There's another business that I do. So he'll get, um, it's restoration one. Okay. You get tumblers and I put the vinyl on it, mm -hmm. but I reverse weed it and he sandblasts it so that it's low. Ooh, local. that's, that's cool. Really cool. Right. Yeah. So it's just sort of like, like partnering with other businesses that need that's help because cool. I mean, they could go to a big company, but most yeah. of them say the same thing that I do. They're like, well, I'd rather support a small business for and sure. Do this for me. Cool. For sure. Well, and I think that's, um, one, and I don't ever like to say benefit, let's say silver lining to the pandemic is we've been able to really find a lot more of, I think people really started to rally around small businesses and people locally that can make things because they realize like, Hey, our neighbors are suffering. My, right. my friends are who run a business are having a hard time. And I think it really kind of helped us refocus things a little bit on, on local. And so that makes me really happy that people are, are actively um, seeking that out. I would much rather pay more money 
for a, a product that's local than paying, you know, less to buy something that's going to just get shipped to me. Um, right. It always used to buy a, a doormat at Target for like 10 bucks. Sure. You know, that's cute and says welcome or whatever, yeah. but it's, you know, like, who are you feeding? Yeah, no, hundred percent. Well, I used to get really frustrated. Um, I'm a big uh, like street fair person. I love going to like the, the, date fair vendor festivals and like the livestock show and stuff. But I used to get really frustrated when you would walk through these places and everything was the same product that they just bought from a place and they're just there trying to sling a product. And so, um, one of the first times that I ever really found that niche kind of thing was in green, like in green, um, Texas out there, they mm -hmm. have like green market days. They only allowed vendors who hand make their products. And so I think that's really interesting me that we're finding all these little I feel like I just keep finding all these little nuggets of people that do business and I'm like it makes me so excited because you know our friend Erin makes bath bombs like I would have never used a bath bomb other than one of hers because yeah. I don't trust a bath bomb that I buy from somewhere else that might make me crazy no I well what's I don't in know it. what's in it I have sensitive skin what me is it too. gonna do my skin I'm the same way like I'm not a bath person yeah. Um, I've been to three of her bath bomb classes They're so fun. <laughs> and I've used them. My kids love them. Yeah. I like to like have them and then give them as gifts to people. Yep. And it's the yep. same. It's like I, I know who my money's going to. Exactly. I know her voice very well. Okay, cool. I'm helping feed them. I also know what's in it. I trust yep. her. Yeah. So, and yeah. I think that's the benefit really of, of being able to use someone, um, local. And I think there's an accountability factor there too, mm -hmm. because you know, and I just, I'm using Amazon blank blanket, but if Amazon, you know, they don't, they care, but they don't care. Right. Like, like if you get something from a third party, like there's been a lot of reports this year of, you know, you get stuff and it's like knockoff, whatever. Yeah. And even like down to like toothpaste, yeah. you know, it's not the same, even though it's got the same brand. So I get it. That's a, I trust her. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I've, I've used, um, eczema cream from Luella from triple L. Sure glamour goat cup for my son yeah and we bought some other stuff from the store but like again like i'm afraid to get something really harsh because what if it has an adverse reaction yeah yeah um, and it's 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 cool because you know we all i think have a little bit of that entrepreneurial spirit in us even if we don't even if we don't own a business i think we all want to see people succeed and so i just it makes me so happy that that people are um reaching out to you in that capacity uh, as well did you, when you first started the, the doormat thing, what, what, how many products did you have? Like how quickly did it take you to go from like three styles? You know, did you just initially start out with two? Did you initially start out with one design or did you kind of say, all right, here's 10 things right off the bat that I'm going to sell. Like, how did that kind of progress? So on Etsy, the magic number is 100 listings. Like you're statistically, you just rank higher if you have at least a hundred listings. Cause nobody wants to come to your shop and be like, Oh, they only have four things. Sure. You know what I mean? Yep. So like I had worked up to that point with crochet stuff, sure. but with crochet things, I had to physically make each item to be able mm -hmm. to photograph it and post it. Sure. With doormats, it's a little bit different. So like a lot of my listings, are just digital mock-ups. So like I took a picture on my porch with my feet in it of my blank doormat and then yeah. I import it into my software and then I type out whatever I'm going to put on it, you know, change the font, whatever, put it, overlay it and then take a screenshot of that. Now the sure. doormat that you did is going to look exactly like that. Like I have sure. people that have left me reviews. There's, they'll put a picture in the review. So there's a picture of what they purchased. Yeah. That's the with the digital mock-up and then they put sure. a picture of their actual thing and if you really look at it you're like oh okay well, like the the letters have um texture to them sure. because it's, of, yeah. yeah i get that but other than that it's exactly the same yeah because i'm going to take whatever design i did yeah. on the digital mock-up that's what i'm going to cut and that's what i'm going to paint sure. but that allowed me to be able to make a whole lot sure. of products really really quickly so without i just having to use without having to material. actually make them and then have a whole bunch of inventory sitting here going well i really hope i sell a hope you like cats doormat here right. soon <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and so i i started making those and like trying to come up with original sure sayings or ideas and then looking to make sure like okay well has somebody else done this i yeah. have to make sure my style is different than theirs sure 
and then just one by one going through and replacing. So that didn't take very long once I realized like, oh, people will actually buy doormats from me. This is a thing. Okay, cool. You know, it's funny because it's like, it's a very specific thing. You know, I, I love it. And, and it's, it's so creative and it's, you're right. It's like a decal for your house. Um, how do we want to, I guess, how did you get started in, um, being an entrepreneur? I think we kind of talked about it, you know, privately, you and I, but what kind of led you down the path to running your own business in kind of a, a nutshell? So I had an Etsy shop many lifetimes ago. I was a stay at home mom. Gotcha. Um, and I started it because I wanted a creative outlet. I was home with the kids. I was really bored. I'm, I've always been someone who makes things like mm -hmm. my, my friends and my husband get irritated at me because I'm not a big TV watcher. They'll be like, what do you mean you haven't seen this movie or this show? And I'm like, I just have better things to do with my time. Sure. And that's nothing against people that like TV. I just yeah. have always been someone who wants to make things. Sure. Um, so I did that. Fast forward, got a divorce, went back to work, whatever. Still had the, the Etsy you know, it's just kind of like a hobby. If you treat it like sure. a hobby, it pays like a hobby. If you treat it like a business, it pays yep. like a business, right? Yep. So in 2016, um, I was working 50 hours a week. I was having to like step off the make table to call my kids and tell them good night. Oh, I would yeah. Home and, go to bed, and that was hard. Um, and and you were working in restaurants at that time, right? I was. I was the GM at one of the pizza huts in town. Gotcha. Um, and I, my boss asked me to give up my only weekend day off and switch it to a weekday. My son was in public school. He was in kindergarten. And I said, no, um, I don't want to do that. Like I'd already been meeting the minimums and I just, w you know, it was kind of like a, for me, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I didn't have kids not raise them. I'm already like really upset at how much time I'm spending up here and away from my family. Sure. Like, crying on my way to work because I didn't want to go, you know, but it's your chain to that paycheck. And that was really, really scary. And I, I was full of anxiety, but I knew in my heart, like I'm done, I'm done yeah. doing this. I, I can't. And my husband was hundred percent supportive. He was like, well, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Yeah. You know? And I was like, I can live out of my car, but my kids can't live out of my car. <laughs> like, what am I doing? You know? Cause like, I knew I wanted to quit, but I was like, you can't like as a responsible adult, yeah. leave a job without having something else lined up. So I was not responsible though. I gave them a month notice and just left. Yeah. And my neighbors were like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. You know? And I so yeah. I came home and I had the Etsy shop. And like I said, if it, if you treat it like a hobby, it pays sure. like a hobby, but if you treat it like a business, it pays like a business. And so I was like, well, what if I just throw more energy into that? Now that I'm home, I have the time. Sure. Um, some of my friends who were still in the restaurant industry were like, Hey, can you watch my kid? Because normal daycare hours don't work sure. for them. So I yeah. accidentally started a daycare too. Um, <laughs> um, but I, and I, I always, started, just, I accidentally <laughs> started a daycare. It's fine. It was, well, I mean, I didn't mean to, like, I'm not like, I love kids, but I, I've never been that kind of, and I was like, yeah, but I, I knew them. I knew sure. Them. Yeah. It's different when it's people, you know, like, yeah. It's extra money. It helps them out. Yeah. I'm all about helping other people. So it was cool. Cause sure. I, I did the daycare struggle whenever yeah. I was at Pizza Hut, you know, it was, it was always a race, always yes. running. Um, and that's and, no fun. Like that's no way to live a life. Like, no, it was, it's like I, I, and I tell people, like, I felt like I was on a treadmill that was going too fast and I couldn't get my feet up under me. And I yep. felt that way for two years. Yeah. And it was always this like, just rush, 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 rush. Like, and yep. I'm so stressed. And I was like, this yep. is horrible. I can't do this until I'm 65. I don't yep. want to do this until I'm yep. 65. I have to figure something else out, but it's, that's not our cultural mindset. Like it's yep. not the norm. Right. Yep. So I left anyway. Um, and we just figured it out. And then I, you know, I was like, okay, well I'll put more energy into this. I was doing a lot of crochet orders. Um, and then I started doing the doormats and then that really took off. I was still watching kids sure. at the time. My husband was working at a different restaurant and I was like, okay, this is going to work. Cause I like, whenever I left pizza hut, I just reverse engineered it. I was like, okay, how much do I make right now? This is what we have to have for our bills. Yeah. I've always been someone who like struggles with money. <laughs> like, like I've never had like so much that I was like, I don't know what to do with it. So yeah. I have to budget, you know? So right. I was like, okay, how much do I have to make every week? And then just broke that down. Okay, yeah. if I and how many products? Day, and... If I sell this, then I'm replacing my income, then we'll be fine. So like yep. breaking it down into bite sizes like that made it sure. not as intimidating. Yeah. And then I was like, I can do this. Like I'll figure mm -hmm. this out. There's other jobs yeah. out there. Like if I have to go work for someone else, I can. Yeah. But I'm going to try this. And That's that was awesome. in 2016. In June of 2016, I left. And then in February of 2018, um, 
I was painting mats in my kitchen as fast as I could and watching kids. And I called my husband and I was like, I need you to come home. And he was like, okay, like what's going on? Like, do you need me to come home early? And I was like, no, like I need you to come home forever. I can, I've done the math. And like, at that point, like I was like making twice what he was making. We didn't need his income, but I was like, sure. I can replace your income. If you come home, I just need extra hand. I need help. And we could be together more and I, we can still make more money. Yeah. Help. And he was yeah. like, you know, but I'd already taken that before and he's very like pessimist and was like, but have yeah. you thought about and fixated on all the ways this could go wrong? Yeah. So again, I was like, there's, if something happens, you can go get another job. It'll be yeah. fine. But our ultimate goal was for everybody to be at home. Yeah. I was schooling our kids before it was mandatory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say that, but I feel so bad for the parents that have been like forced to do it. Cause that yeah. it's, it's yeah. not for I um, um he, I love my children, but I love them. I'm probably better, gonna get in trouble for this. I love them a lot more because I get to miss them. Right, um, right. that sounds terrible. So please, no. nobody at me, okay? I don't want to hear it. I've had daycare kids that like their parents love them very much, but they're a handful certain days, and they yeah. drop them off, and they're like, "They're your problem. Love you. See ya." <laughs> <laughs> and there's been days that like I watch the bus drive by, and I'm like, "Wait, you know, like you forgot too." I realized I wasn't built to be around them all day long. Um, yeah. I, I kept mine home for about six weeks during the beginning of everything when everything kind of happened. And um, I finally, we decided it was, felt, we felt, we felt comfortable sending them back to um, here at the time. And uh, it, it, everybody's happiness increased. And so, it, you know, you just, sometimes, you I know, heard, I heard <laughs> both ways, like, oh, like we're fine staying at home because it works for our family and others. Like my kids are so happy to be back at school with their yeah. teachers and their friends. Sure. You have to know what works for you and your kids. Absolutely. I was on the phone with clients trying to talk and I had children screaming and pulling each other's hair in the background. And I was like, I can't you have, like it. mommy Tourette's on the phone. You're like, I'm sorry. Hold on. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. Like, like customer service my voice. I do that on the phone and she laughs at me all the time. She's like, I'm, you make me feel so normal. I'm not the only person that does that. I was like, no, if you have ever had a child, you've done that on the phone. Yeah. And most moms, most moms just accept it. Like they just pause. They don't even like, right. okay, cool. You're back. All right. Wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, I know with, uh, I'm sorry, with the pandemic obviously still going on and people still, you know, COVID is still an issue have you had to, have you had time to really sit down and kind of project where you think you'll be in a year or have you just kind of been rolling with the punches and kind of hoping things go the way that they need to go? So, so it's kind of a long question, but I no, think you kind of understand what I'm asking. Yes. And it's very, it's very relevant. And I think a lot of other entrepreneurs are going to be like, yes, please tell me because I'm Tell us about this. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I had events booked out all the way through June super excited because normally like after Christmas it dies right and I was like oh we're gonna be okay it slowed down a little bit but I was like well we have these events it's fine and then March came yeah and we had to shut down and I had to cancel everything and I was like real panicky because like I said it's we both work from home now yeah and restaurants weren't a thing like yeah it's not like my husband gonna be like well I'll just go get another restaurant job like he's got so many years in, in sure. restaurants and hotels so I was like okay yeah it's fine. gonna do it'll be fine right um, that picture of the dog in the burning building. You yeah, know what I'm talking about? It's fine. It's just fine. Everything's fine. I'm making fajitas. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I started making masks like before it was mandatory, like homeschool. Um, and it was mostly like when I started, it was initially like I was taking donations of fabric and like people were donating money because I was making them in bulk and like giving them to first responders and like people yeah. that have to work like pharmacists, like that they sure. still had to have contact with people because they were wearing the same like N95 for a week mm -hmm. or two. Yep. I remember so seeing all that. Filter. Right. If they'll let you, here's this, like it's got a pocket for filters. I got filters. Here you yeah. go. And then it right. became mandatory and then you couldn't find masks anywhere. So April and May back to back, I broke my sales record. Wow. Both months. And I was like this, but I didn't sleep very much. It was a, yeah. two things in one sewing machine. Like it was... Yeah. It was There's only so much you can do. I'm only one right, person. Right. Um, I hired two people to help. And so that we kind of had an assembly line going and it helped. Sure. Um, and then after that, it was, you know, yeah. really dropped off. But normally it does during the summer for sure. people that do what I do. Like, you know, you make things like it's slow in the summer. Um, and then you have back to school. Everybody's mm -hmm. 
because they bought school clothes and school supplies. And then normally like right after Halloween, it picks back up. Like that's yeah. been the trend for the last yeah. several years. It's you talk to other vendors, they'll tell you the same thing. I was a little, I guess, skeptical is the best word of this year, just because of the pandemic. Like I feel sure. like things aren't as you're not able to predict yeah. like normal. You know, like normally, like during the holidays, it's booming and the markets are great and everybody, but I was like, are we going to have markets? Yeah. Like, am I going to be allowed to do events again this year? Like I was last year, yeah. if we have markets, are people going to come? Yeah. You know, because like the last thing you want is for people to say, well, you're practicing unsafe habits, you know, sure. like don't yeah. do events. Like if I'm doing events in restaurants, well, it's the same rules as if you go to a restaurant, like if you're wearing your mask, unless you're sitting there eating, whatever, yeah. it's fine. Like we're trying, but I'm yeah. like, I, I have to make money. Yeah. No, I feel you. And I, I've had that conversation with a lot of my friends. The way I approach it is typically I respect everyone else's opinion to live how they need to live. Right. Um, but these are the things I have to do in order to be happy, healthy. There's more to health than just physical health. You know, got to happy, healthy and, and, you know, and comfortable. So I, yeah. I totally understand that. And it's like, everybody's been really great. Like if they have, like if someone's going to have a private party in their house and you know, they invite everybody. If somebody has been around someone and they have to quarantine or they're even like a little sniffly or whatever, they're yeah. real quick to be like, Hey, I can't come. Yeah. Um, just, I just would hate to, and even if it's just a cold or whatever, you know, they're yeah, like, I, like I think we all have a new appreciation for sickness now. You know, my kids sneeze and like everybody looks at them <laughs> like you're voted off the island. You got to go. You know? <laughs> but this, everybody's been really good. Like I have a little tint. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? There's your bubble. Um, we're like, like two or three of the guests were sick. And I was like, well, we can reschedule it, you know, because I don't want your guests yeah. to miss out. And so like, everybody's been super accommodating in that part. Because awesome. this is like, I just hit, I've been doing events for a year, yeah. like going doing the doormat painting parties for a year. And so like, that was, you know, like getting through, it was like, well, I don't really know what to expect. Like rolling sure. into the summer this year changed it. Sure. Um, I wish that I could tell you that I have like goals or projections for next year. I just, I'm honestly like, and it's not that like, I don't want to set them and be disappointed. I just have no idea what it's going to look like. And yeah. so I still feel very much like I'm in survival mode. Sure. Um, not, not just, you know, like personally, like as a mom and a wife, but like for my business as well, yeah. like right now I'm neck deep in yep. orders because it's for the holidays, but it's, it's not as busy as it has been in sure. years past, which was expected. Mm -hmm. um, the markets this past weekend, they had turnout, yeah. um, which was cool. They weren't as busy as the ones that I went to last year. And I, they, for me personally, I did not do very well. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it was, I didn't, I had very low expectations because sure. of the pandemic. And so if I want to get through this month and then we'll have to reassess and see where things are at. I think um, that's where a lot of people year, are. Yeah. For part of this year, it was really difficult for me to get supplies. Yeah. Uh, whenever we shut down, I launched the doormat painting kits. Well, since everybody was at home, they were buying up all my paint. Yeah. You know, because they're yeah. like, oh, I don't have time for these projects now. And I go to the store and I was like, stop buying the paint. I need the paint. And I, <laughs> like, I couldn't get it. I couldn't. And I'd walk out with like a cart full of all these bottles and you know people with you paint some mm -mm. nope I drink these it's fine you know like <laughs> I, I have the most absurd answers like when I go get doormats like we'll get like two carts of like 100 doormats from Ikea and people walk by and they usually eyeball me but I've had people be like doormats huh what, what are you gonna do with those I'm, I'm recarpeting my house like I decided that I'm sick of grass so I'm gonna put these out in my yard instead I'd love to see the ants build a home in these you know because I'm a jerk but it's it, the the paint was oh, like paint, but I wanted to be like, can you not buy the paint? Buy it for me. <laughs> I need this. And then it was the same way with doormats because most of the doormats are imported. Sure. And so for a while, like that's why I had to switch to go getting them to go get them from IKEA because yeah. I normally buy them from Home Home Depot here in town. Sure. And their shipment got delayed and it got delayed and it got delayed and they had all these orders that I had already bumped, like you know, message the customers and let them know, like okay. I don't, I'm out, I don't have yeah. any, I'm waiting for them to get here. And so I was like, at that point, I was like do I have to stop selling doormats and sell something else because I yeah. can't get the item? And so like, that's another thing. And like in the back of my mind, I'm like, if we shut down again, yeah. or that becomes an issue again, like, well, I mean, it's a hurdle that I've already jumped over, but what is it going to look like? Yeah. Then? You know what I mean? I do think that, um, what's one thing that has come of this is being able to learn how to be a little more flexible as an entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, you had to. one of my favorite words is pivot. Um, <laughs> 
there's been a lot of people uh, that have had to figure out how to um, change not even like what they're selling, but the method of selling, uh, you know, curbside, things like that. But even in, in what I'm doing, you know, real estate is very much a networking business. And when you can't see people in person, you're limited to, you know, social media. And that's, it's you know, like, really, how do you really show houses when you can't be around other people? And there's, and everybody has a different comfort level with right. being in your, you're in someone's home, you know? And so it's, it's been interesting to navigate and figure out how to do things uh, in a different way. Um, but it has, I think it's made us more, um, I think resourceful is probably the word. Mm -hmm. um, we've, is that last year we would have been like, oh my gosh, that's too hard. I just can't. Right. Now it's like, oh, you we'll want to see, we can do, do a video walkthrough. That's great. Let's do a video walkthrough, you know? And um, I mean, there were people that bought houses sight unseen or had only seen them one time, you know? And, and so it was interesting. Um, but I think, I think it has made us more uh, resilient. Mm -hmm. I agree. Is there anything that you wish, I mean, granted COVID has kind of affected all of it, but anything that you wish you could have told Brittany who was starting out all those years ago with the crocheting, like w w if you could give one little business nugget, Brittany from seven years ago, what would that be? Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do it. <laughs> You're an idiot. No. Um, I probably would have told her to dream bigger, honestly, because like I'm, so I'm really good at like giving business ideas and, and advice to other people. But yeah. if I have an idea for me, I always think like, oh no, that's, that's shit. Like it's horrible. Nobody's going to sure. do that. And it's, you know, it's like one of my best friends pushed me to open the Etsy shop and it took a lot of pushing on her part. Who's going to buy a doormat? That's probably what you said to yourself. Like, well, so like it starts with this, with a machine, like she had a, a silhouette and I asked her to make me a decal and she was like, yeah, come over and I'll, I'll show it to you. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, and I went and she, she showed it to me and she was like, you should get one of these. You could do a lot with your Etsy shop with it. And I was like, no, ma'am, I won't tell you what I said. Cause it was not polite, but I was <laughs> like, no, you've already done this to me once. It was the same yeah. friend. And I was like, I, that's horrible. That's so yeah. expensive. It's $200 for that machine. Like I make hats and three bucks. Yeah. You know? And so she nagged and nagged. And I was like, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just, what am I going to make with it that nobody else is already making? Sure. You no, know, it's because in my mind, I'm like, well, I have to reinvent the wheel. Like, why yep. would I do things the easy way? Right. Yeah. Yep. So I, I finally got one and like, it sat on the shelf for a week because I was afraid to touch it because it, I was scary. You know, new. Right. Scary. Scary. New. I, mess up, I just undo it and then do it again. It's fine. Um, but I pulled it out and I, I started working with it and I, it's, it's always me looking at it going, oh, I don't know if I'm capable. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if people yeah. will buy that for me. I don't know if that's a good idea. Sure. Totally different than like the voice that I have when I'm talking to other people. I'm like, you can do this. You're so wildly capable. Oh, and so I, I'd like me then as a stay at home mom with two babies, I would love to shake her by her shoulders and just be like, you want to dream bigger Yeah. because you are capable. You're wildly you can do it. capable. You can do so much more than you think you can right now. Yeah. You know, that's, um, one of the things that I love about joining the women entrepreneurs group is you kind of get that in your friends. Um, mm -hmm. you have people that when you're feeling hard, when things are feeling really hard, you can reach out to them and you can say, I don't think I can do this. And you have an entire chorus of cheerleaders behind they're you like, saying, oh, yes, yeah, you can. Can. sorry, yes. Sorry, mom. Sorry. Um, you know, and I think that's, I think that's wonderful because, um, I told Marie the other day, it's like a tripod, you know, like if you have, as long as you have two legs or as long as you have you know, the three legs, y'all can hold each other up and much easier to stay, stay up when you have support system. So that's absolutely that's good advice that's for the, sure. That's been the make or break for a lot of the other women in the group going through this year, you know, mm -hmm. like it's been a safe space to vent and like talk about honestly, like, Hey, here's what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. And be like, Oh, cool. Well, I mean, it sucks that I'm not alone, but yeah, I'm not alone. Yeah. Other people are going through it. And it's, it's makes you feel like you're not so much on an Island by yourself. And you do have people in your corner that will yeah. drop whatever they're doing to come help you with yeah. whatever you help with as long as they can. Wonderful. Well, Brittany, I really appreciate you taking time out of your, um, your day to chat with me. And, um, I'm looking forward to being able to have a painting party sometime soon maybe in the spring when it gets nice and it's nice outside yeah. we can do like a big outside event um but i i appreciate you you are wonderful and i think that you're doing fantastic so um everybody i'm sorry 
Uh, so thanks for having me on today. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna um, include all of your uh, social media handles and links and website stuff and all that good stuff in the post, but um, I appreciate it and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.